Hey sports fans, are you in the market for Florida sports or just keeping up with the latest in the panhandle? Palm Tree Sports is a dedicated audio hub to all things sports in the Sunshine State. We cover current events, big news, heavily favored opinions all across the NFL, NBA, MLB, and so much more. So come check us out every Saturday evening at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a down south education on Florida sports and athletics. It's hosted by yours truly, Corey Pujols, and it's powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Palm Tree Sports Radio. My name is Corey Pools, your host, and as always, it is brought to you and powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Hey, guys, uh, first things first, just a little bit of housekeeping, guys. It's going to be a relatively short, short show today, uh, just due to the fact that, again, you know, with the offseason, with uh, obviously with so many different sports right now taking place, there's not as much information. However, I do want to let you know that uh, sooner than later, the show will be going through a little bit more changes, so just be ready for that, guys, but don't worry, I'll keep you posted on everything that's going on there, and I'm super excited for it, just got a few more housekeeping things to take care of before uh, being able to do such a thing. But with that being said, guys, let's hear a message from our sponsors real quick, and then we will get right into what's going on for you. I do have a little bit of information from the NFL, MLB, NHL, and a little bit of college baseball info headed your way, so get ready for that, guys, but first things first. Let's hear from our sponsors. Hi, eSports Radio fans. This show is brought to you by Planet Jerky Premium Brisket Beef Jerky. Planet Jerky is the official jerky of the 2022 California League champion Lake Elsinore Storm, single-A affiliate of the San Diego Padres. This all-brisket jerky has gluten-free options, contains no MSG, no sodium nitrate, is low in sugar, and high in protein. Go to their website at planetjerky.net and follow them on Instagram at Planet Jerky. Planet Jerky, the jerky that's on a whole other Sports Radio fans, be sure to check out our sponsor, Seal the Deal Wax Seals by Cecilia B. You just finished your very own wedding or baby shower invitations and you're looking for that extra special touch? Maybe you just wrote a letter to a relative or a friend and you want to add to their smile when they receive it. Then seal the deal with Cecilia's handmade sealing wax stamps for your invitations, letters, and gifts. You bring the deal, we'll bring the seal. You can find them on Instagram at seal the deal underscore wax stamps and on Facebook, seal the deal wax seals. That's right, everybody. Welcome back to Palm Tree Sports Radio. Again, my name is Corey Pools, your host. And as always, it is brought to you and powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. First things first, guys, uh, for those of you who watched it last night, I don't know uh, it, who you, anybody was going for, realistically speaking, but uh, UFC 302 is really, really good. I'm not going to jump into all the details. Co-main event was amazing. Sean Strickland pulled it out against Paulo Costa. Great match. 
Uh, and then obviously in the main event, Dustin fought Islam Makhachev. And it, it breaks my heart to say it, but, you know, Dustin lost fifth round submission. Uh, very close. Dustin really pulled in back into the fight, making it 2-2 in the fourth. And um, unfortunately, he was just unable to bring it home there at the end. I feel really bad for him because, you know, that might have been his last hoorah. So uh, congratulations, Dustin, on such an amazing career up until this point, unless you hang it up. One of my favorites to ever do it. So, you know, sad moment there, but hey, uh, these things happen. He's not the first that it's happened to, and I'm sure that he won't be the last. And, you know, so I wish him nothing but the best. And Islam, man, I'm not the biggest fan, but good fight, man. Great fight. Great fight. So, and you know, Taryn, that's actually a great question. That's something that's kind of been on my mind. Uh, You know, I'll, I'll say this before we get into things. I remember back a few weeks ago, we were talking the Panthers versus the Bolts, and then I remember saying that would probably be the most exciting series. I think that the series with the Rangers was actually more exciting. Uh, There was a little bit, there was a few times, actually, we saw the Rangers just starting to play very, very well, and we were thinking, okay, like, here they go, and then boom, just Florida would just kind of bounce back. Again, being so strong defensively is the key. I mean, defenses win championships, right? And I think we really saw that in this series, especially in the latter going in the win the last three games. Uh, As a matter of fact, let's just dive into that. I feel like that's actually a perfect way to start the show. So here's the deal, guys. In case you missed it, uh, obviously the Florida Panthers were taking on the New York Rangers there in the uh, Stanley Cup, or not Stanley Cup, my apologies, but the Atlantic, uh, the Atlantic Coast, uh, uh, semi-finals, or I guess is how to say it, technically, since we're not in the Stanley Cup Finals, and the reason why I say it like that is because I kind of got a little lost in transition, but realistically, uh, it was, it looked like both of these teams were really even, especially at the beginning of the series, uh, you know, these, they're all one puck games, and that's one of the things that really jumps out at you when you look at how well these two teams are playing. Uh, one mistake going back the other way could change the scope of the thing, but I really think that the Panthers realistically just have, they have a slightly better all-around team, but they have the better defense of the two teams. Uh, that's what it came down to. I mean, they were just genetically to be able, they, they were genetically unstoppable, I would say, especially in the last three games, and, and their defense really shined. Uh, that For me, that's going to be the pivotal thing. I wasn't able to catch every game because, unfortunately, I don't get the channel here, so I kind of have to follow it on my ESPN, or when I'm out, you know, if I'm out and about and the game happens to be on, then I can see it, which is what happened. Uh, for game five, I was able to watch probably a cool 20 minutes of it, 30 minutes of it, something somewhere around that. But I, I'm going to try to get my hands on the channel. It's just easier said than done right now. Of course, for those of you who have Spectrum, you know what I mean. You don't get all the channels, unfortunately. Uh, but with that being said, it was still fun to keep track of because, you know, I was having this conversation at work with one of my coworkers, uh, and he loves hockey. And he said, you know, so it, it sucks that the the Bolts you know, knock, got knocked by the Panthers early in the playoffs so where do you go from here like who do you root for from here and I'm like you know I think it's been if it's in a different situation like if this was college football or if this was um you know something where the rivalry matters more than winning I would say we root for a different team like we just go somewhere else complete like we might be saying hey I want Dallas to win it all right but the Florida Panthers and the Bolts playing as well as they did this past season as well for the last what four or five years in total It really shows you the level of competition that we bring down here, and I think that made it so much easier to root for the Panthers and obviously wanting to bring the Stanley Cup back here to Florida. Of course, I think that's probably a big part of it. Uh, There's a little uh, pride, I would say, that's there, and so I would say I'm feeling pretty good about it. I I said this you know, for the last two weeks. I really think the Panthers can win it all. I really think they can win it all. They played extremely well to close out the season. Uh, They've always shown resiliency whenever they're facing a team that's as tough as they are. And they showed that against New York. I think that's really what it comes down to. Again, their their defense was magnificent. I mean, yeah, sure, you know, you got to score. But some of these were 2-1, you know, puck games, guys. So, like, it's not like there was this onslaught of offense there really wasn't it was ma- it was mainly defense and I-, I think that again the Panthers their defense is just tremendous right now as good as anybody's in the league at the moment if not the best uh something's gonna carry them to the championship and they always say defense does so I really think that's what's going on there uh, super excited for the Panthers can't wait to see who they're gonna play whether it's gonna be the uh Edmonton Oilers or if they're gonna play the Dallas Stars it's looking like Edmonton from the last the last time that I saw it I don't know about you guys but the last time that I saw it uh Edmonton was up 2-0 at the end of the first. I mean, that's a strong start. I mean, it, listen, 
we're talking about an elimination game. You starting out two always going to start. That's about as good as it gets, right? So you know, if anybody has a score of that, can throw it in the chat for me. I'll mention it. But realistically speaking, it's looking like it's going to be Edmonton. And then what a finals that would be, right? Like I, I, I haven't, I haven't seen Edmonton on the board as much as we've seen them this year and any other year, to be realistic. I mean, Dallas Stars, yeah, they've, they've played tremendous for the most part this year. I mean, that doesn't surprise me in the least. But, you know, Edmonton's really come out swinging, and uh, they're doing a really good job. I mean, they're up 3-2. You know, like I said, it's an elimination game for Dallas. So, uh, it, it, how interesting, right? Because uh, didn't Dallas just, you know, route the Timberwolves in the NBA um, Western Conference Finals? And then now we have the Dallas Stars here who are, well, they're in trouble, so it's quite the opposite, but, you know, hey, we're going to see what happens uh, by the end of this game, like I said, last time I saw it was 2-0 Edmonton, so it's looking like it's going to be the Oilers versus the Panthers in the World Series, or World Series, my apologies, the Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, I'm super excited, I'm super pumped for that matchup, these two teams are as, as, they're similar, but they're not similar, right, because the genetic makeup, Edmonton has this, they, they do have a, a offensive setup, you know, as well as, you know, pretty different, pretty good defense. Their transition needs a little work. And I only say that because from what I've seen, the few times that I've watched them play hockey, which has been maybe three times this year, realistically, uh, they've, they were in some tight ones, but they were also playing good teams. So, you know, and one of the games was against Vegas. So like, I can't, I'm not going to say they're bad, right? Cause they're not, but obviously what I saw during that time frame, uh, I, I felt like their transition was the only thing that was kind of, uh, questionable. And you know, regardless if that's the case or not, I, I, we're pulling for the Panthers, right? So that's just how that that's just how that goes. So good luck, Panthers. We hope you guys are able to close it out, re- regardless of who you guys play against. You know, whether Dallas makes this late run that pushes it to a game seven, then snaps it in game seven. I mean, regardless if that happens or not, and obviously it doesn't like there's a strong case for that. But regardless if it does or if it doesn't, uh, we're we're going Panthers all the way. There's no animosity there between the the Panthers and the Bolts. It's it's just a good old fashioned. Uh, similar to the Red River rivalry, right? Just without the Red River part, if that makes sense, guys. Uh, great respect for for both teams. Obviously, I love my Bolts. Uh, Amelie Arena is special to me. I've been many times, and, and I love that place. Uh, we actually just had 98 Rock at Amelie Arena recently. So, you know, it's more than just a place where we play hockey. Like, it offers a lot, a lot of venues uh, for a lot of different things. We've been. I went to see my first Monday Night Raw at Amelie Arena. Also, we got to see... Um, the BMX guys on the bikes, the dirt bikes, you know, just acting a fool, man. And it was great. Honestly, I, everything that they do there is phenomenal. So if you ever, if you guys ever find yourself in Tampa, I'm telling you right now, whatever the venue is at Amelie Arena, go check it out. It's pretty cool. It's, it's always, it's always a good time there at Amelie. But chief among them going to be hockey games. And that's just how that rolls, right? That's just how that goes, right, guys? So, but yeah, that's what it was, you know, and then obviously, like I said before, the Panthers beat the Rangers 2-1 to advance the Stanley Cup Final. Uh, like I said, there were a couple 2-1s there in the series, close games, but again, just defense, just tremendous defense is really what it comes down to, shutting down um, the New York Rangers is one of those things that, that w- did not come easy this year for any team, and so for the Panthers to be able to do it, especially in the last three games, to really just wrap up the series and put a nail in that coffin, man. Uh, I gotta admit, it feels pretty good. Mom's not super happy about it, I imagine. Uh, she, you know, she may live here in Florida, but she is from New York, so uh, shout out, Moms. I love you if you could hear me, but realistically speaking, uh, you know, good job, Panthers. I mean, that's all I have to say about that, and you know, good luck to them as they move into the uh, Stanley Cup Finals, and like I said, it looks like it's going to be Edmonton. Either one of these teams are going to be a phenomenal matchup. Either one of these teams. I I personally rather it be the Dallas Stars, just because I'm impartial to the city of Dallas. Aside for the Cowboys, I actually like what everything else they got going on there. But um, yeah, that's my personal you know bit on that. Uh, now obviously, there's going to be a a serious change that takes place coming up soon now the question is we don't know if it's going to be the bolts who make some offseason moves and then return to the top of the heap and you know kind of take this first round exit as a nitrous boost to become a better team but hey that's there's always the possibility but again the panthers are showing no signs of slowing down second straight stanley cup finals appearance this team is all gas right now no breaks and if i i just feel like if uh if i were any other team i'd get out of the way you know and and what a great feeling again for somebody who lives here in Florida. So, uh, good luck, Panthers. Good luck, good luck, good luck. Um, so, moving forward, guys, I figured that was a great way to start. We normally start with something else, but, you know, that was actually a very interesting development as far as... I, I didn't think they were going to just outright knock the last three games out. That's the thing that happened. I, I thought there was going to be some fight, 
uh, there with New York. And, I mean, listen, it was it was a lot more one-sided than it seems. I'll just put it to you like that. It was a lot more one-sided than it seems. What's not one-sided is the fact that it's not just Tristan Wirfs looking for a new contract. Actually, Chris Godwin is also looking for a new contract. Listen, the reason why that bit of information is important is because one of the things that people kind of forget is that Chris Godwin's contracts have been small, right? They've been, you know, three years. There's not been that five-year lock-in, right? Well... I don't know if that's strategy or not, but I can tell you this. With the increase to the um, salary cap for the NFL, obviously there are going to be a bunch of players out there looking for their due, right? And Tampa Bay, who has done a tremendous dro- job over the last 10 years of drafting talent, is now actually starting to see the fruit of their labors. Uh, I think that we should be able to find a deal with these two guys Sooner than later, I think that you can probably sweet talk Chris Godwin a little bit just because I think everybody knows we want him to stay. There's not a single person here in Tampa or in the organization that would want to get rid of him. You could tell us that whoever from any other team was on the block for trade and, and all that team wanted was Chris Godwin. I tell you, I guarantee you we're keeping Chris. And that's with all due respect to the rest of the time in the NFL. The reason why is simple continuity. Okay. You can go out there and you can get whoever you want to get when they're free agents. But when you have somebody who has fit, fit so well in a system, I mean, let's not forget, guys, he was drafted when our quarterback was Jameis Winston, and he was a baller when Jameis was our quarterback. Then we got Tom, and Tom took him to another level, right? Like, I think I think when everybody used to think about Tampa Bay, they would think, especially well, when Tom was at quarter, right? They would think Tom, Gronk, uh, for the split time that he was there and not losing his mind, A.B. and Mike Evans, right? Like, that's the bit of the offense that you think about. But if you go and you look at, who Tom Brady targeted during that time frame that he had at Tampa Bay, he targeted Chris Godwin about as much as he targeted Gronk. And that should tell you a lot. And and the biggest thing that should tell you is that Tom came in and provided a level of leadership and, and direction that kind of was unmatched in Tampa Bay up until that time, at least since the time of John Gruden, realistically. For those of you who remember uh, our old football coach, Oh, took us to our first Super Bowl. The reason why I say that is because when Tom came and did it, he did it on the field, right? So doing it on the field is a little bit different than doing it from coaching because when you're doing it on the field, you're kind of showing the other guys, hey, look, you can do this, you know? And that was one of the things that made Chris Godwin such a threat. And I think that's the exact reason why he deserves a contract because he learned at such a pivotal time from such a pivotal person that to let him walk or to be unsatisfied just wouldn't be in our nature to find success. I think that you make the guys happy who have stood by you and who do it right. And I think that Chris Godwin is a perfect example of that. So I I would suspect that he's going to find himself in uh, good hands when it comes to getting a, a, a re-sign as far as the contract is concerned. And obviously, I think that Tristan Wirfs is obviously going to sign for big money as well. I think at this point, they're just working out the numbers to try and get it appropriated to what these guys need to make or what they want to make to be happy. But realistically, guys, I don't don't get your hopes up. Neither one of these guys are walking. Uh, these are two pivotal pieces to the success that Tampa Bay found, but both in our Super Bowl run and also ever since. And I have to admit that I'm very proud of both of these guys. And I think they, they will hopefully retire as Buccaneers. And that's my hope for, for Tristan Wirfs and Chris Godwin. But, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys, for Tampa. Uh, other than that, you know, the guys look good. Um, Mike is already making wild catches, you know, just showing he still has it in year 11. Uh, Baker Mayfield looks more comfortable than ever. The man just looks happy. He just he looks like he's where he he needs to be. And I don't I don't say need to be from a standpoint of, like, if he's not here, then he's he's square, right? Like, no. It looks like in his life journey, he's right where he needs to be. And for somebody like Baker Mayfield, I followed him in college. I followed him at, at Oklahoma. And this is a perfect fit for him. You know, I thought I had that feeling when he was in college. And I don't know if you guys, you know, are like that where you watch sports and you can see somebody. And you're like, that person is going to, they're going to be a part of our journey. Or we're going to be a part of their journey. Or so, there, something's intertwining here. I felt that way about Tom. For those of you who who never heard this story, long story short, uh, my dad, both my parents can actually attest to this. Me and my mom, back when I stayed with my folks, I was we were sitting out on the on the balcony looking out, and we were talking about the football season. I think the season had just ended, and the Buccaneers had a terrible record. This is I'm sorry, but this is back when James was at quarter, and I said, man, 
it would be great if Tom came to play down here, you know? Like, I just I just feel like that's what we're missing, right? Like, we're just... And, yeah, it's easy to say that about Tom because he's the GOAT. But I just feel like Tampa Bay's just never had a quarterback that could just stand there in the pocket and get it done. I mean, and you, you go ask somebody, when was the last time that Tampa Bay had a quarterback that could just stand in the pocket and get it done? And I would tell you it was Brian Greasy. I, if I remember correctly, it was Bob Greasy's son, okay? Brian Greasy was the last son. Guys, the running back for Tampa Bay at that time was Cadillac Williams. Just think about that for a second. Do you, you guys even remember who Cadillac Williams was? If you don't, go look at his tape. Great tape, great tape. I'm telling you right now, it's not, it's not what you're expecting. But Cadillac Williams was our running back, all right? We had uh, Joey Galloway. You remember him? Joey Galloway, the dude who does the announcing for college football? Yeah, he was our number one wide receiver. Okay? So that should give you a time frame of what we were talking about the last time Tampa Bay had a, a legitimately competent um, pocket passer. So when you look at that, it, it was something that it, it came to fruition. I'm so glad that it did. And, and uh, Fruits of Our Labor, we won a Super Bowl because of it, and we've appeared in the playoffs just as much as any other team aside from the Chiefs in recent memory. Excuse me there, guys. So with that being said, now that we have somebody who I think is a pocket passer first but has wheels, I think that elevates us into a position where, you know, we look and we say, yeah, that's our guy right there. Baker is our guy, you know, and I, I'm very happy with the skill set that he's brought to the table. I'm very happy with his first year's performance, and I look forward to what he's going to do this year with Chris Godwin at his side and uh, Tristan Wurst blocking for him. Uh, real quick information on the Dolphins. For those of you who do not see, did not see it, uh, Jalen Waddle did re-sign with the Dolphins, so he is staying there. That's a three-year extension. Uh, I forgot the worth. My apologies, guys. I was scrambling to get that information. But he did lock back in with the Dolphins, keeping both those speedy receivers there for at least the next couple years together. Uh, ho- hopefully that's going to be what Tua needs because he's been struggling. Guys, he's been struggling off the off the books right now. So for those of you who haven't been watching, it's not anything great. Uh, Jaguars don't have anything outstanding, really interesting to talk about at the moment. I think right now they're just in development. They're really trying to get their continuity put together and and develop better as a as a unit, which is what they need to do because the crumbling that they went through last year was ridiculous. Just keep in mind, at one point in time, they were seven and three, guys. You know what I'm saying? Just seven and three is is a far cry from how the team ended last year. And that's something that I don't want you guys to take lightly because that happens to a couple of teams every year. Uh, it's It happened recently um, to the Eagles. If you guys remember, the Eagles kind of squeaked into the playoffs and then got dismantled by Tampa Bay, so that's an example of that. Uh, uh, they're not the only team, though. I mean, Minnesota was once a powerhouse. with a team that we were looking at last year thinking they were going to make some noise uh, to win the division. You know, Kirk Cousins just wasn't able to, to really to really get it done, you know. And, and no to chagrin of his own, but the team has just been decimated over years, and that's just an example of what I mean. Uh, there again, there's there's some others. The Jets, you know, Aaron Rodgers got injured. That really hurt what they had going on, and they lost a lot of players because of it. So you know, this year will be no different. Here's hoping that it won't be Tampa Bay, uh, Miami again, and of course the Jacksonville Jaguars again, of course as well. So that's what's going on there in the NFL, guys. But let's go ahead and get to our first break. Ethan, when we get back, we'll go ahead and jump into the the rest of the information that I have for you this evening, as far as the MLB and NCAA is concerned. And I'll send you guys on your way. But until then, keep it locked here. At Palm Tree Sports Radio, my name is Corey Pools, your host, and as always, this is brought to you and powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. college football and do you want to hear a college football show dedicated to all that is college football including junior college and the triple ccaa and the njcaa the naia and the ncaa including division three division two division one double a in the fcs and division one single a in the fbs well then look no further join myself larry b and my colleagues, Mr. H-Town Blake, Blake Henley, and Mr. Christian Espinoza, each week during the college football season for the latest in college football on Three and Out College Edition, right here on IE Sports Radio, your directory for all that is sports. up, 
everybody. This is Taryn Rodriguez. Are you a fan of volleyball? Are you a fan of Thunder Spikes? Then I have the show for you. Set Point, where I cover NCAA men's and women's volleyball, high school boys and girls volleyball, beach volleyball, and even professional volleyball. Catch the action every week here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. So listen, for those of you who were wondering what was going to happen between that Mike Tyson and was it Logan Paul fight, uh, there's been a development. Uh, Mike Tyson has some undisclosed uh, reaction or possible injury to some sort that has delayed said fight. So if you guys were wondering what's going on with there, that is actually what took place. The fight has not been canceled. However, uh, we don't know exactly what's going to happen. Again, the injury is slightly undisclosed. There definitely was a reaction of some sort. Uh, and so we're waiting to see if Mike is going to be okay. Man, what a devastating guy that was in his prime. You know, just, just a little food for thought there as far as some of that random information that you may have missed if you haven't been eyeballing it, right? But in any case, what we're here to talk about is the Sunshine State and all the sports involved there currently, which happen to be the MLB, and we actually have college baseball still going on. So with that being said, uh, welcome back to Palm Tree Sports Radio. My name is Corey Pujols, your host, and as always, this is brought to you and powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Guys, let's go actually, let's, uh, let's talk college baseball first. So, First things first, our beloved Florida Gators are still in the mix. They were taking on uh, Oklahoma State University, okay, 11th rank OSU, in the Stillwater Regional. Score was actually 0-0 at the bottom of the second last time I saw it. So, our boy still dancing, hanging in the mix. Uh, might have the best college game, uh, uh, my bad, M- might have the best college uh, baseball player in all of baseball, or college baseball that is, uh, Jack Caglione, congratulations to him, guys, if you guys did not see, he did set an SEC home run record, 30 jacks in a season, guys, that's correct, 30 by Mr. Jack Caglione, Jack, if you ever hear this, congratulations, brother, man, you are a talent, the likes of which we have not seen here in Florida for a long time, and I have to admit, man, it's been pretty cool to watch, I've actually watched a couple of, uh, a couple of games, and I actually saw you for the first time hit a jack in, in real time, and let me tell you, man, you've got it. You are going to be a stud in the next level. I can't wait to see where you go and what you do. I will be following you, and I really hope to to catch more of your work moving forward. Have to admit, guys, he's a very exciting player to watch, and the man has absolutely got it. He's He just has it. So one more time, ladies and gentlemen, for Jack Caglione setting an SEC record with 30 big ones in one season. Congratulations, Jack. Now, as far as the rest of the team is concerned, well, we're 30 and 28. Okay, the team that we're playing against is 42 and 17. Okay, so there's a big discrepancy there. However, uh, the Gators are not letting that stop us, nor have we ever. I think we do some of our best work regardless of the sport when our back is against the wall. There are times where we're just flat out dominant, but realistically speaking, I think that there isn't there a little if there isn't a little bit of pushback, it's not a Florida Gators team, and I think that that little bit of pushback actually makes us that much more incredible because we're usually a team that's here to stay and again it it doesn't matter what the sport is when we get hot we get hot and that's just how it goes and I love it I love that for us now when we're not hot man it's ugly let me tell you it's scary there are times where I've watched our teams just crumble in ways that are depressing but you can't have highs without lows if you guys remember a few years back Purdue was able to upset Ohio State University which is arguably the most storied college in all of college sports and athletics uh as chosen by history and the people, but not by me. I can't stand Ohio State. I mean, ill. Um, but that's neither here. That's neither here. There. The point is this: that when our boys get hot, they're basically unstoppable, and we're hoping that they get hot because if they can do that, they will find themselves right back in the world college uh, college baseball World Series. My apologies, guys. So, as far as the Lady Gators were concerned, we don't want to talk about the last game. Uh, Texas just destroyed us ten zip. Man, it was very very rough. Uh, I don't want to talk too much about it. It was just heartbreaking. Like, we weren't in it from the beginning. Uh, I, I got to see, what, maybe seven minutes of it realistically. And I saw two home runs. So, yeah. 
rough game for our Lady Gators. However, let's see. Let's hope our boys can carry us through and, and make a uh, University of Florida proud. Right. That's the hope. We're gonna leave it at that. But again, congratulations, Jack Caglione. Uh, I can't wait to see what he what he's able to do next and what he does at the next level, guys. Uh, but that's that. That's college baseball, guys. That's pretty much all that's going on right now. Of course, um, there are no other teams representing Florida at the moment as far as college baseball is concerned. So you know, there there's that's kind of the you know the end of that as far as uh, college baseball is concerned. But as far as NC, uh, um, my apologies, Major League Baseball is concerned, the MLB, the Rays were able to beat the Oilers today, score 4-3, to three, one ball, uh, one home run, uh, separating the uh, the score for today, which is good because they lost the previous two games to the Orioles. So, you know, at least they get out of this series. Lost the series, but at least they squeezed out a win there. Uh, they're still two, two games behind 500, guys. They're, they're sitting at a 29-31 and 31 record. Nothing to be proud about at, uh, whatsoever. Uh, the Orioles rocking a 37-20 record, one of the better records in baseball at the moment, and this team that happens to be playing very, very well. Uh, I think the Gators, should, or Gators, my apologies, the Rays just need to build upon that, right? At, They've been very inconsistent all year long, and injuries have been at the forefront of the issues. We started we started the season with what was it two or three starters on the uh, uh, injured. So you know you get one back and and then he gets injured again, Josh uh, Josh Lowe, and it's just it's so frustrating, man. I think that this team is is dangerous when they're healthy, but when they're not healthy, they're they just like any other team in any other sport, man. So just heartbreaker, uh, just a heartbreaker right now for what's going on as far as the injuries are concerned. But hopefully our guys can get healthy before it's too late. I think that's really the only hope that our team has. There's not going to be a lot of work that we can really do with anything else. Uh, not At least, you know, I'm, I'm racing through my mind trying to think of different options. But realistically, there just aren't that many other options available for us right now. So hopefully our guys can get healthy and we can get back to the consistency that saw us win more than we lost the year before. Or at least something that's that can write home about, right? Because, again, currently the way we're representing our our logo is just it's not it's not working and offensively we're very inconsistent at the moment uh, we're not sure who we want to be and i think that's part of the injury you know that we're dealing with the injuries i should say plural that we're dealing with however they're three and two in the last five not to be mistaken the two losses come to the orioles come from the orioles i should say uh you know two games again below 500 that's that's the start right like in any sport you want to work with 500 and then go from there i don't think you really want to try to get too far behind because when you do that trying to play catch up burns you out faster i don't know if any of you guys have played sports but think about it it's always easier to stay with a play early than it is to catch up later okay and if you've played sports you know what i'm saying right you never want to play from behind when you play from behind you know unless you're a wizard right or the 93 uh, Buffalo Bills, you don't really want to play from behind, right? Like, uh, and I say that for those of you who remember 93, Buffalo Bills, 32-point comeback to uh, defeat the Oilers in the AFC the wild card round of the playoffs. If you guys never saw that game, I encourage you, go check it out. I really, really encourage you to go check it out because, man, what a gut check that was for the Buffalo Bills. Uh, a great synopsis of it would be uh, the year of sports in 1993. For those of you who watched, uh, used to watch uh, the Sports Illustrated uh, the year in sports series. It's a great series. Go check it out. Go learn you some history, you know. But, yeah, that was an example of what I meant there. And, again, playing from behind unless you're the Buffalo Bills is not really your thing, right? So, come on, Rays. Let's figure it out. Next game is going to be against the Marlins. That game comes to you Tuesday, June 4th, 6.40 p.m. In case you want to watch some Rays baseball, guys. Uh, again, unfortunately, just due to the nature of, of my uh, current provider, cable provider, I am unable to watch the majority of their games. But whenever they're on, I watch them. Put, don't, make no mistake about it. Whenever it comes on, I watch them. Uh, but it's usually few and far between when the games are on a different station. So, you know, it is what it is, unfortunately. And, you know, hopefully I'll be able to catch one of these games coming up soon. But, yeah, uh, you know, like I said, Tuesday, June 4th, 6.40 p.m. is going to be the game against the Marlins. That's going to be a two-game series, guys. So, uh, you know, a little uh, little rivalry there. And then you're going to renew the rivalry with the, the uh, Orioles once again because after that we go into a four-game series against them, right? So, basically, what is that? Three, five, four, nine. So, uh, seven of the... The most recent nine games will have been against the Orioles. It'll be a really good time for us to get acquainted with each other. And hopefully the Rays can pull out a series victory here uh, against the Orioles the second time around. And perhaps get even get above 500. I think that's the goal. 
I think that's the move. Uh, hopefully, that's what they're able to do. But only time will tell. Literally, only time will tell. But wishing nothing but the best for our boys and guys. Uh, that's pretty much it. You know, that's what I have for you guys this week. Again, like I said before at the beginning, it's going to be a short show. I want to do my best to get as much in there as I could. But realistically, again, being in the offseason with the most of our teams knocked out of playoff contention, we're just going to have to wait to see how they're able to rebuild and how they're able to come back, uh, hopefully bigger and better than ever. That's pretty much what the goal is. And, you know, in the event that they're able to do that, you know, we'll have a lot more to talk about. But until then, guys, this has been um, everything that I have for you at the moment. So keep, keep me locked in, guys, every Sunday evening. At uh, 9 p.m., you can catch me here on uh, Palm Tree Sports Radio. And again, as we get closer and closer to the start of the NFL and college football seasons, I'll have a lot, lot, lot more, inf- more information to bring to you guys. And then again, for those of you who did not see, they released some of the gameplay for the NCAA a 25 college football video game guys it looks great if you're planning on copying it holla at me because i'm definitely going to grab a copy myself i can't wait to see it i got to see my boys in blue and orange uh run around and it team looks good man it looks good on the game so let's see how they translate into the real thing uh, i hope your team is on there i hope they look good can't wait to play dynasty mode again uh i'm gonna have florida win like the next 15 championships so you know 15 16 you know some light right something like not 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 too bad right you know but yeah, looking forward to it, guys. So thank you so much for having your your uh, your time or spending your time with me, I should say. I really appreciate you guys there in the back. Uh, I can't tell you how much it means to me for y'all to be able to, to to hear my voice or for me to spread this information out for those of you who aren't, aren't familiar with Florida sports, guys. So again, uh, I can't wait to see you guys same time, same place next week, guys. Listen, have a wonderful week. Uh, for those of you who are be- headed back to work, for those of you who are, you know, in school, you guys are on break. Um, uh, 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 I don't want to say like a... A summer break, but it's essentially, you know, it is summertime. So, but guys, I, I really take this time to, to break. Like, listen, the world is a crazy place right now. All right. And you guys can kind of hear it from my voice. There's a lot going on right now in my life. And I don't know if you're going through that too. I'm not going to go into detail, but guys, there's a lot going on in life right now. And I'm sure that's the case for everybody, but it's okay. I mean, we wake up every morning. We have breath in our lungs. We have, you know, a place to call home. If you have a car, you have a car. Congratulations. I mean, I, I have one. I'm, I'm proud of everything that I have and I'm thankful to the most high uh, for everything, you know, so I just hope you guys can, you know, experience that as well, whether you're going through it or not, whether life is good or not. I hope you can experience that happiness, you know, and just kind of live through that. Uh, I don't know, you know, what's going on beyond the borders of this realm, but I'll tell you this much. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to share my time with you guys. I'm sure sh- I'm glad to be able to do this show. And I look forward again to being able to talk to you next week. Spend time with your family. Make that phone call if you haven't made it, uh, you know, eat good, sleep good, you know, and, and, Let's get back to work tomorrow, guys, you know, and then on the uh, next weekend, hopefully we'll have a lot more to talk about. Until then, it's been my pleasure. My name's been Corey Pools, your host, and as always, this is brought to you and powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. See you next week, guys. Peace.